of their disobedience because of their complaining and speaking the wrong things. Listen, my family. Verse 32. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness and your children shall wander in the wilderness 40 years and bear your whoredoms until your carcass be wasted in the wilderness. You see that? You see how the, their children had to suffer as a result. Even though they were going to make it into the land, they had to carry that burden. Our Heavenly Father is very patient. This is what a lot of us fail to realize. He is patient. He can wait. When we do evil, a lot of times, many of us, when we do evil in the past, hopefully none of you are doing it now, but when a lot of us fail to realize is when you do evil, many people think they're going to get paid back right then. No, I have the father can wait. This is what's so dangerous. It's dangerous to fall into the hands of an angry father. He has the ability to wait. Do you see this? Listen, verse 34. After the number of the days in which you search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year, shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and you shall know my breach of promise. Do you see that? See, that goes to show that our Heavenly Father, it wasn't even there in, it wasn't, thank you, my Father King, it wasn't even his intent for them to have to go and walk in, in the wilderness and wander for 40, 40 years. That wasn't his intent, his intent. His intentions was to bring them in. But because of what they did. I have the father didn't break the promise, but notice how they themselves by their actions. Now they're beholding and witnessing his breach of promise. I have the father has promised us beautiful things. But he has the ability to breach it. Not due to him, he has integrity. He will always keep his promise. But if we dishonor him, do you realize we can bring about our own destruction? Do you see this, my family? Verse 35, I, the master Yahuwah, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness, they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. And the men which Masha sent to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died before the plague. Listen, died by the plague. Thank you, my father, my king. Even those men that did bring up the evil report upon the land died by the plague before the master Yahweh. That's powerful. Because you had other men who stirred up the congregation. When our Heavenly Father said that you were to take the land, they was basically saying, we can't take the land. So they were speaking against our Heavenly Father and caused the majority of the congregation because the children, of course, our Father allowed to go in the land. But to cause a disruption among the congregation for them to speak evil towards our Heavenly Father. And it was sad is that these type of things that are very relevant happen in our lives today. How when we can go through, even though we're not living in this time, but when we go through certain things in our lives, we get so bogged down and we're around things that are so negative, we begin to speak out against our Heavenly Father. And we begin to blame Him for the things we're going through. We all can relate to these things. Don't boast in your heart, my brothers and sisters, just because you're in the truth of our Heavenly Father and our King. Go back in your previous lives when you were not there, when you were still a baby, when you were growing. And certain things that you didn't understand. And you begin to be frustrated. You see this, my family. So this is a warning that now that we're growing, that when we go through things, it does not mean that we cannot question these things or express what's going on. And 
inquire about things, but what we need to do is do it in a respectful manner. It takes discipline to be able to He's got my father, my king. It takes discipline to be able to, when you're feeling emotion, to be able to balance the two and govern your emotions. To be able to put your emotion, not throw it away because it's a reality to you. It's a present reality to you. But to be able to set it aside and to reason with our Heavenly Father about the situation. And ask for his counsel and his son's counsel. To help you to deal with your emotion. Because if you do not do so, then what the enemy can do is use your emotion against you. To use your emotion as reason. You understand? And you be consumed to where you are speaking blasphemy. You understand? And what did our king say? If you speak blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, do you realize that there's no forgiving? There's no forgiveness for that? In this life and in the world to come? Do you see this, my family? Now let's focus on, let's go to. Now, so far we've learned that we were to, from in a, going back to the Dadake, my family. We've learned from the Dadake chapter 3, from verses 1 all the way to 6. How we were to flee from evil, not to become angry. Thank you, my father, my king. Not to become lustful, not to become a diviner. And in this segment, we've learned not to become false, not to become a grumbler. We've learned these essential keys and warnings. Do you see this, my family? To abstain from, to not be consumed by these things. You understand? Even though we might experience these things at certain levels, but not to be consumed by them. And our Father, our King, has guided us in the scripture to be able to see instances that correlate with these things and these issues. Now, let's go to Galatians. Let's go to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Let's read something of interest to help us to be able to grow and understand it. Thank you, my Father, our King, for what you're doing. Galatians, the fifth chapter. And let's start at verse 16. Listen what the Galatians were receiving regarding this truth. It says here, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You see this? When you walk in his mind, our heavenly father and his son, when you walk in in the mind of them. Do you realize that by walking in their mind, being obedient to their thoughts, do you realize that you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh? Now, many of you may question and say, well, how do I do that? Well, when you're getting ready to do something wrong, if you pay attention, you hear our Heavenly Father tell you in your conscience, don't do that. Don't say that. Don't go to that place. Don't do that. See, if we listen to his still voice, do you realize that by being obedient to his voice, it will avoid many future problems? Do you understand? And what does it mean by fulfill the lust of the flesh? Thank you, my father, my king. It means that when you listen to his mind and you're obedient, you will not follow your own mind to where you get yourself in trouble. Now, that does not mean that you don't have common sense anymore or nothing like that. What the scriptures is conveying is the battle between our father's mind and the carnal mind. Do you see this? This is what's not being taught in church, that there's a battle between what our father wants you to do and what you yourself think you want to do. And so because of that constant battle, if you don't yield to his mind, you're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Meaning you're going to do those wicked things that are concocted in your mind. Do you understand? Listen. Verse 17. For the flesh. Thank you, my father, my king. When it says the flesh, he's not speaking about the human body. It's thank you so much, my father, my king. 
Because many of us in church, we got so confused. And we look at our bodies and we begin to cut ourselves. Now, I'm not speaking about those in the body. Who knows what many have gone through. But what I mean is people who have experienced this particular misunderstanding, they'll begin to cut themselves and they, they begin to look at the Bible. They begin to look at what it says and not truly understanding the true expounding of it. They begin to say, my flesh. So they begin to look at their body. Do you see this? And they begin to despise the very creation that Heavenly Father made. When it says for the lust of the flesh, it's speaking of the carnal mind. Do you see this? This is how our ancestors were inspired by our Father and our King's precious spirit to convey the message to the people. Listen carefully. It says, verse 17 again, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things you would. What does that mean? Many of us, all of us have experienced before when you were tempted in temptations that have transpired in your life. And this temptation comes to you and, and a part of you is like, I want to do that. But another part of you is like, don't do that. See, what you're experiencing is what? His spirit against the carnal mind. This is why people are hoped between two choices. And you know, in media today, they would make fun of this and they would make a, whether you look at cartoons or whether you're watching shows, they'll show a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other shoulder. Do you see this? And in some of the instances, they are right, but they're mocking it. But we all have two choices. We all battle between the spirit and the carnal mind, the flesh. Do you see this, my family? Listen, verse 17, again, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you that you would listen but if you be led of the spirit you are not under the law that's powerful why for those of you who say you're not you know uh, i'm no longer under the law well when you are obedient to our heavenly father how can you break his commandments how when he's telling you what to do when you yield to his thoughts and he speaks to your conscience, how can you disobey him? Listen. Verse 19. Now the works, now we're going to find out some interest. Listen. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Listen to this carefully. Which are these? Thank you, my Father King. Before I'm led to read this, all of you who have been walking with me in the teaching so far of our Father and our King. Haven't we been learning about all these things not to do? About all these struggles that we all are familiar with? Listen carefully. Verse 19 again. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery. Listen. Fornication. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy. Murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Almighty. See, what's so powerful, when you all begin to read the epistles and the letters, when you put yourself in the perspective of the recipients who are receiving this counsel, 
you begin to truly understand that our ancestors dealt with the same struggles that we deal with today. The things in the ancient world that the evil things were being advertised in their day just like it's being done in our day. That's powerful, isn't it, when you really consider there's nothing new under the sun. These people were struggling with the same evil things and practices that we are struggling with today. And notice how it says in the, at the end of verse 21, it says, listen, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the Almighty. But why is it that we're living in this time when you have these churches, institutions of learning, these synagogues, these mosques, these spiritual centers, all of these people who are so-called instructors are telling us and promising us the peace of the Almighty, and yet we're still struggling with these things. Very seldomly are you hearing people say that if you could continue in these things and you do not overcome them, that you will not inherit the kingdom. But what we have been told is that he, it's okay, you know, come as you are. It doesn't matter. Now, that certain parts of that is true, meaning that when you come to him in your sinful state and you confess your sins, he will forgive us of our sins when we truly repent. So some of the aspects and expressions of what they're saying, somewhat of it is true. But when you think that you're going to come as you are and flaunt in Please give me the right words, my father, my king. Brag and boast. Thank you, master. And you say, well, this is here, God. This is how we say, God, this is me and my evil ways. Accept me as I am. And you tend to stay in that condition. You are wrong. Our heavenly father does, is not going to adjust to you. We are to adjust to him. He's not to conform to us. We're to conform to him and to his son. If you a gangster and you a thug, don't think you're going to go out here slanging and banging and thugging for the most high. It's not going to work that way. You understand? You're going to put down that bandana. You're going to put that gun down. You're going to put that lifestyle down. You're not going to rep your city blocks no more. What you're going to rep or represent is our father and our king's kingdom. And you're going to be changed. Do you understand? You women out there, if you were loose and whatever thing that you were dealing with, your struggles, you're not going to bring that thing to our Heavenly Father and try to advertise and continue in that state. No. You were to do what? Change. Learn righteousness and unlearn evil. It's a process, but you have to be willing to make the effort to change. And He will work with you you see this? But many of us, we're just being told, just believe. And that's it. That's not how it works. Thank you, my father, my king, for your wisdom. Go to Romans, the first chapter. Let's look at this here. This is a warning to all of us. And we, it was interesting that we were learning the, the fruits as far as of the flesh. The deeds of the flesh, how they're evil. Notice how I said how the lust of the flesh are manifest, meaning revealed. All those things that I was led to read to you and such and like. If we're not careful and we don't overcome those things, but our father, our king's help, we're not going to make it in the kingdom. Go to Romans, the first chapter. I have a father. It's not his will that no man, it's not his will that any man perish, but that all men come to the knowledge of the truth. And the truth is this, if we continue in evil doings, we're not going to make it in. The wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 1, please. Starting at verse 28. Listen carefully. Speaking about mankind in general and their evil ways. Listen. Verse 28. And even. Listen to this. Thank you, my father, my king, for the correction. Go back to verse 26 because this is an issue here. And this is not hate speech. This is the Almighty's speech of inspiration. And you can either receive it or reject it. Verse 26. For this cause the Almighty gave them up 
unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And we're living in a day of compromise. We're living in a day where homosexuality, these type of things that are contrary, many people are bowing down to it. Now, people have the right. You can live how you desire to live. But understand, if you're talking about trying to come into the kingdom, do you realize that you must be delivered of these practices? Do you see this? You can look at the animal kingdom and you can look. Thank you, my father, my king. You can look at the animals and look at the nature of them. Do you see male lions with male lions? Look at the gorillas. Look at the birds. Look at the creepy things. Does not nature teach us some things? Do the animals go against the natural use of the genders within the animals? Could it be that animals are smarter than men? No. Or could it be that man have become lower than beast? Do you see this, my family? Even the animals are wise in how they live in their kingdom. We can learn a lot if we pay attention. Go to verse 28. Listen. Thank you, my father, my king. And even as they did not like to retain the Almighty in their knowledge, the Almighty gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Here is another warning. If you continue, if we continue, if we continue to disobey him, do you realize, see, this is something that we're not hearing in church. He, our Heavenly Father, if we continue to disobey, he will give you over to a reprobate mind. This is the danger that you think you're doing what you want to do, not realizing that he's giving you over to do those evil things you desire. And you think that you're doing these things because you are born this way or you are doing these things because you want, you want the right to love who you want to love and do what you want to do. Not realizing that our Heavenly Father has already given you up to do those things. Why? Because you did not want to heed him. So what did he do? He gave you over to it. That's powerful. But there's hope for you. That if you, even in that fallen state, if you cry out to him, even in that fallen state, and you acknowledge that, Father, something's wrong, I'm dealing with something, I'm struggling with something. If you confess and you realize that, wait a minute, this is not right, even though I have those urges and desires, Father, something's wrong. Do you realize that he can give you his mind and reveal to you his truth and his thoughts? And by that, you will be convicted. Because he's reasoning with you regarding your sins. And that's when the change can happen. So for those of you out there, this is not a hate speech. <laughs> not at all. Do you realize that you too can receive his salvation? But you yourself have to be willing to acknowledge what it is that you were doing that is wrong. And if you repent and let him come in and give you his thoughts and reason with you. Why not to do these things? Do you realize that you can receive salvation? But the choice is up to you. It's not his will for any man to perish. So for anybody out here that says that our Heavenly Father hates anybody who's struggling with any type of evil, they are liars. Our Heavenly Father, he said it's not his will for any man to perish. But what? To come to the knowledge of the truth. You must come. You see this, but it's something that you have to do. You have to cry out to him and then he will draw you to his son. Thank you, my father, my king. Listen. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness. Now, listen, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Backbiters, 
haters of the Almighty, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection. Listen, implaceable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgments of the Almighty, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And we're living in a time where it's be everything, all the evils are being forced upon us. To where now people are getting awards for doing these same things. People, when you look at the certain ceremonies where these people are receiving awards for what they are doing. And you see people, <laughs> yay, yay, clapping and celebrating. Do you realize, knowing the judgments of the Almighty, and we, as a human family, if we're not careful, we can be condemned for even having pleasure and co-signing and supporting the evil that's being awarded in front of us. My brothers and sisters, I just thank you for you being attentive to our Father and our King's teaching. And let us continue to put away the evils of our ways to grow into their righteousness and truth. Do you see this? Be not conformed to this world. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And it's a growing process. But if we truly want to change, he's willing to help us. Do you see this, my family? I love all of you. Continue to grow. I wish you blessing and peace. In the name of our Father and our King, Maranatha. Amen.